Welcome back to the line. In an election year, voter registration efforts heat up, certainly. The Santa Fe, New Mexican looked at voter registration data and reported this week that 50,000 voters have been registered in New Mexico since the end of January. That's amazing. The paper also looked at registration in specific districts, and we put up a link to that story on our website. That would be NewMexicoInFocus.org. Tom Garrett, do you think the new voter registrations could have an impact on the outcomes? That's a simple question, but a big one. Yeah, a simple answer, yes. Okay. Um, it, will have a, yeah. it will have a big impact. You know, anger, frustration, panic. Uh, have a way of motivating people to go to, you know, to register. Right. That's only part of the equation. Um, the right. part that really matters is if they take that right mm -hmm. uh, and vote, actually. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I thought that the Santa Fe New Mexican had some really good insights yeah. about, you know, where they've seen the highest amounts of voter registration. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are in key races that mm -hmm. could impact, you know, the, you know, how the House of Representatives is run. You mm -hmm. know? And I think that, you know, with some folks that I've talked to, there's some who really strongly believe Mm -hmm. that the House of Representatives in the state of New Mexico could flip back over to Democrat uh, control mm -hmm. based on a variety of different circumstances. But, you know, first and foremost, they point to that voter registration. Right. And it continues to increase that gap, Stephen Spitz, between registered Democrats and registered Republicans here. You know, there hasn't been a, a, you know, on a par, so to speak. But to Tom's point, does this give some opening for Democrats here? You know, because, again, the second part is getting people in the voting booth and pulling the lever for your party. Yeah, I, I don't, it, to me it's not really surprising that you're getting more registration in a yeah. presidential year or that the registration is tilts Democratic mm -hmm. uh, because these are these low information, low energy voters. And the trick as you, as Tom's already pointed out is, do you get them out to vote? Right. Uh, and, and here uh, in surrounding states, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Latinos in particular have mm -hmm. been registering in great numbers. Now, New Mexico could be different right. because about 30% of Hispanics in New Mexico self-identify as Spanish or Spanish ancestry. Right. So we could be more like Florida where Trump has recently taken the lead in opinion polls. So it's, it's not clear. Right. But the other thing you need to talk about is, mm -hmm. you know, how do you get these people to vote? And that's messaging. And that's a get out the vote that's right. uh, drive. That's right. And on that, Republicans are way ahead uh, because they have more money. Mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. in my district, I live in the North Valley, I've gotten bombarded by Sarah, uh, Sarah Maestas Barnes. She's sent out a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. She has, I think, uh, uh, according to uh, the journal, $166,000 in her coffers. Annie Romero has 66000 mm -hmm. She's gotten... 50,000 of that 166,000 from other people. I'm sorry, 150,000 from other legislators. Oh, wow. So yeah. the Republicans are in good shape. Right. Uh, the, the Susanna PACs have over a million dollars in them. They're ready. So mm -hmm. I think, as Tom really indicated, it's too soon to tell. Right. Registration may be up, but we don't really know what's going to happen. Right, that's a good point. I found it interesting, Sophie, that there was a bit of a Bernie bounce in yeah. some of those districts. That yeah. was interesting to me. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, the, mm -hmm. the concern, I think, on the Democratic side is that those new registrations um, may lean pretty heavily toward people who are like, I'm going to register Democrat right now so that I can vote for Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. Sanders in the primary. Mm -hmm. right. If my candidate does not get the nod, I may sit out the general election. Mm -hmm. That's a real concern. I think the, the other thing to look at is that the parties know that a, a, let's say, a seasoned voter, somebody who's voted in multiple elections, is much more likely to get themselves to the polls than somebody who has just registered. Mm -hmm. And so the, <laughs> what we see is that the effort, the cost to get uh, a long-term voter into the, into the polling booth is, is much less than that effort and cost, cost to get a new voter in. That's an interesting And so point. they're, they're uh. always looking at, you know, where can we be most efficient, mm -hmm. where can we be most effective, right. and pretty much always, and then the Obama campaigns were, were different, but pretty much always, they're, those parties are going to want to focus on their seasoned voters. Right. So, is it going to create a balance? I think, I think we have, you know, we have yet to see. But for the Democrats, they've got to be worried about that Sanders voter element, right. um, and whether those people will, in fact, turn out even for local elections. That's a good point, Harry. You know, interestingly, GOTV get out the vote work right. is where it either happens or it doesn't happen. Right. Mm -hmm. You can either spend money on the day of, or mm -hmm. and, or suffer the consequences. Right. 
So it's not just about registration, as everyone's pointing That's out right. here. But how big is it, however, as a driver to the polls, the issue? What issue, uh, let me put it this way, what issue could drive people to the polls right. in New Mexico right now, besides mm -hmm. turning the bums out, so to speak? Right. It's got to mm -hmm. be something a little bit more than that, it seems to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. and one of the things we haven't really talked about yet is voting in down ballot races. So you may have a lot of folks who are registering because they want to vote for Trump or Clinton. But is that then going to lead to voting in the down ballot races that would then uh, lead to a change in, the, in control for the House, uh, right. uh, for example? Right. It's really, really hard to uh, say because the word low information has been used before, and I think that is really a, a problem at the uh, state uh, uh, level. Mm -hmm. uh, this campaign is just, re presidential campaign, is just really, really hard to uh, fathom in terms of <laughs> how it's going to affect everything else that's uh, going on. That's right. Will, for example, it drown out everything that's going on in the state level in terms of uh, the budget problems yep. and uh, economic uh, development? Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure, particularly for the uh, new uh, voters, what's going to drive them not only to the uh, polls, but then to really get informed on these uh, local and state level issues mm -hmm. that are going to have an enormous impact. And that last bit right there is interesting. They go to uh, Tom on this one. You got to spend money to get that information out. That's the other part of it. It's not just get out the vote money. You have to get out there. As we say in campaigning, walk, mail, walk. That's how you do a district, but it costs money to mail. It costs money to show up. It costs it, can we, it, you know, it's it a difficulty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, it all comes down to, I mean, you can, you know, walk, you can mail, you can, you know, uh, do advertising, sure. you know, social media, pro promoted posts, but it really comes down to, do you have a message that mm -hmm. connects? And yep. really finding out what that message is. Is it going to be the economy? Will mm -hmm. it be the death penalty? Uh, will it be, you know, something else that we don't even know that's But isn't on the it about issues up your block? You, it you is, know what I mean yeah, for people, is, and how do you, you how do you know, make that an issue know. in any given district, right? Yeah, and that really comes down. I'm sorry about that, but to okay. really be in, you know, is, am I safe? Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. am I making money? Am I better off than I was four years ago? Right. Um, you know, all those types of questions, it all localizes, uh, you know, it, really that conversation. And, um, you know, people will talk about, you know, the, the larger state issues, the presidential issues, mm -hmm. but they're really passionate about what's happening on their street and in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And the successful candidate is going to be the one who taps into that mm -hmm. localism of how they're going to fix or enhance right. the local quality of life. By the way, did everybody just hear the clue for Democrats here that Tom just said? Are you better off than you were mm -hmm. eight years ago? Mm -hmm. If I was on the Democratic side of things, Stephen Spitz, that's my line. That's my line about Republicans. Are you better off right now than you were eight years ago? And let the voter kind of come to their own conclusion there with a little help from. But you know what I mean? There's a way to get people motivated about things, but is that enough? That is my question. Yeah, I think actually that would be a good campaign. <laughs> right. You ought to be right. Right. Well done. <laughs> now, on the other side of this crime, right? Yeah. Yes. That's what the Republicans are going to be pushing crime. But you know, I, I did a show like uh, on the election uh, like two years ago. And I looked at House websites. I mean, I couldn't even tell what they were for and what they were against. They're so vague. They're so, you know. Besides just being there. Yeah, being besides that, just being there. Right. So, yeah, the, the, I think the Democrats in particular have, re, have been terrible on messaging. They're not, yep. you, you can't tell exactly what they're for. And I think, going back to our prior discussion, yeah. they're complicit on all these tax cuts. So, you know, they, you. they say they want to increase government, right. but they don't want to raise the money to do it. Right. And so they, they don't advocate for it. Yeah. And so you can't really tell what they're for. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, if, if they're going to succeed, if they're going to say, yeah, we can do better, they have to say how they're going to do better. Right. And I haven't seen that. That's right. Yeah, let's stay with you on this one. Interestingly, uh, Las Cruces had a little bubble on registration as well. Right. That was an interesting thing to me because that was about a race. A person who's getting back into a race for the third time mm -hmm. yeah. has been working that district, and so correspondingly, those registrations have gone up. Right. And there's an interesting story being told down there. Right. Let's see what happens in it's November. Downtown right. That's Las right. Cruces, That's right. right? So it's That's predominantly right. Democrat. That's and, right. And that and the Republican Terry McMillan, right. I think, is the third highest recipient of intra-legislative money. Thank he you. got forty thousand dollars from other Republican legislators. That's right. So in this sort of shell game to avoid. Right. Uh, campaign finance. So that is going to be uh, a race to watch. It's going to be, it's been close every That's time. Right. That's right. And it's going to be close right. again. Sophie, if you could pick up on what Stephen just mentioned about Republican to Republican largesse. In that people helping each other out, and that's a common thing. This has thing. been going that's on a, for a long time. Right, it's not a bad thing. But essentially, what we see is mm -hmm. that um, legislators in safe seats have a little extra extra money. And I'll tell you, on on both sides of the aisle, 
legislators in safe seats, and sometimes legislators, often legislators who are running unopposed, are still fundraising. Mm -hmm. That's right. It, it gives That's them right. the ability to cut checks to other legislators. It, it helps, I think, to increase their power within right. within the Senate or the or the House. That's right. um, but it also helps to build those party coffers. Well, you know, one thing I wanted to, to pick up on just briefly is, mm -hmm. you know, there's a recent Supreme Court decision, uh, federal Supreme Court decision regarding straight ticket voting. Uh -huh. New Mexico hasn't had straight ticket voting for a while. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, um, you know, in New Mexico it was seen as advantageous to Democrats to have straight right. ticket voting, That's which right. is basically you would say, I just want to click, you know, check one box and vote for nothing but Democrats or check one box and vote for nothing but Republicans. Mm -hmm. Um, in this case, on both sides, it seems to me, if you've got new voters on the Trump side, the Republican Party does not want them hopscotching through the mm -hmm. ballot in the same way that the Democrats don't want uh, hopscotching. So it'll be interesting to see how much, you know, in a super geeky, wonky kind of way, mm -hmm. how much under undervoting we see on each side and which side it ends up hurting the most mm -hmm. here in New Mexico. That's a very good question. I'm going to wait for that. Now, when we come back to the line, we'll look at a recent reporting on unspent FEMA dollars here in New Mexico.